Hello, everyone, and welcome to Ecole Polytechnique's MSCNT webinars. Thank you for joining us. Um, I am Pamela, and I am in charge of the promotion of the different Masters of Science and Technology programs of Ecole Polytechnique. And joining me today are Lily Tukto, uh, Marie Paul Cani, and Erwan Scornet. I will let them introduce themselves. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Lee Tuto. I'm the admissions manager for the um, Master of Science and Technology programs. Nice to see you today. Hello, I'm Marie-Paul Cani. I'm the chair of the Computer Science Department of Ecole Polytechnique, and I am also co the co-scientific director for this specific program. Hello, everyone. I'm Erwin Scornet, professor in machine learning at Ecole Polytechnique and the other co-director of this program. Thank you. So as you know, today we are going to present to you Ecole Polytechnique, as well as the Masters of Science and Technology. Um, and just for your information, we will take all of your questions at the end of the presentation. So do not hesitate to use the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen to ask anything related to the program. So what is Ecole Polytechnique? A few key facts about the school. Uh, for those who don't know, Ecole Polytechnique is the French leading institute in science and technology based in Belizeau, uh, which is about 20 kilometers away from Paris and was created in 1794. We are one of the best world university for students employability and very proud of that. And we have about 3,600 students coming from all over the world. So 40% of international students, but also 40% of international teachers. Um, and we offer different undergraduate and graduate programs from the bachelor degree to the PhD. The student life at Ecole Polytechnique is very important. Students can take part in almost 250 associations in cultural, artistic, social, and scientific activities. And the campus itself offers many services, such as banks, a hairdresser, a post office, a therapist, but also many facilities such as a library, a research labs, innovation center, a museum, and lots of events are organized throughout the year. Uh, professional events, um, in student events, but also cultural events to allow students to make memories, enjoy their time, but also network and be prepared for their future career. So I will let Erwan and Maribel introduce you the MSCNT in artificial intelligence. So this master program is called Artificial Intelligence and uh, Advanced Visual Computing. And first of all, what is a Master of Science and Technology? It's a master which is really in terms of, uh, of courses at the same level as uh, any research master, but it also will give you some practical skills and it is uh, built in cooperation with some industrial partners. In our case, the industrial partners will give you opportunities to work on transverse projects during your courses. So they will really uh, be able to, um, uh, you will really, really be able to be aware of the problems, the real size problems that happen uh, in the in the high tech industry around this uh, thematic of artificial intelligence and visual computing. Next slide, please. Okay, so as I said, it's an experience based learning, and in our case. We will want to provide students with an in-depth understanding of the most recent techniques in artificial intelligence and also teach you to implement them efficiently. This is why it's a joint program between the computer science uh, department and the applied math department. So you will both have the in-depth theory of it and also a practical skills for, for efficient implementation. Uh, then 
uh, we are also combining artificial intelligence with visual computing and trying to give you all the keys to become the next creators of the innovative applications that you can uh, you can build by by combining both. Our program includes, uh, of course, academic lectures, but also lab sessions, uh, which which uh, which are really uh, where you will receive really a uh, practical training in depth, and uh, real case studies and internships. Next slide. Okay, so uh, why are we? Uh, what are we doing really in this master? Uh, it's a computer science master, as I said. It has a major in computer science and a minor in applied math. In contrast with other masters that you can find, with, with, uh, which is not aimed at making of you data scientist. Data scientist is a restricted part of what you will learn. Here you will you will uh, also learn visual computing, which is a specific field of application of uh, artificial intelligence. Visual computing is all what enables you to process multimedia contents. It goes from analyzing and editing the masses of content you find online, such as sound, video, 3D models. Also, it's a very great domain to illustrate artificial intelligence methods, but it also brings new challenges to artificial intelligence. For, for instance, could an artificial intelligence to be trained to be creative or to help users interactively in creative tasks? And also it can help you bringing solutions. For instance, if you want to train an, an, an artificial intelligence on images, you can use computer graphics to build artificial images that will also help for the training. So it's really interesting, this combination of the two fields, and we will say a little bit more just later. Next slide. Okay, maybe I will switch to we'll switch to Erwan. If Erwan, you would like to give this detail here. Yes. Yeah, so um, just to give you a, a, an overlay of what we what you're going to do in first and second years. So here you have a, a small list, but we'll go into details uh, what the course is in first and second year. Um, and maybe I can mention the fact that in second year you have a, a course which is more like a project, which is a transverse project, uh, as Michael mentioned, which is a project in collaboration with companies, so partners, the partners of our master, uh, in which you can really uh, try to, to discover, to find, and to uh, delimit a, a, special, um, a special objective for the company. And it's really important because you, it's not just, uh, just like theory or doing lab sessions, uh, in courses, what you're really going to do in those kind of um, sessions is to learn what are the problematics of the company and try and try to solve them, try to propose solutions. So it's really uh, closely related to what you're going to do uh, after the master. And for both year, first and second year, you will have to do an internship, uh, which must be research oriented, either in academic uh, facilities or in uh, private companies, uh, whether it is in France or abroad, we do not care. But say what what is really important is that it's a, it must be research oriented. Next slide, please. Thank you. So for the first year, here are the list of the, the courses you can follow. So I, I won't have time to go into details of, about the courses, but as you can see, you have uh, so many different courses that are separated into two periods. You have first period, and it will be the same for the second year, first period between uh, September and December, and another period between January and March. And then after that, uh, four to six months internship, research internship. So for the first and second period, you have mostly courses, and these courses are scientific courses plus courses in uh, management, humanities, languages, and sports. Um, that are also really important, and that are the, uh, maybe the identity of what is a Master of Science and Technology. But for the scientific courses, you have courses related to machine learning, to so computer animation, constraints based modeling that is based on all good AI. Uh, and you have courses related to visual computing, such as image analysis. Uh, algorithmic geometry, or, uh, for example, image synthesis. 
So you have a mix. Uh, so we try during the, the previous year of the master, we try to uh, create some elective courses. So all from all these courses, you can choose uh, with the, if you prefer, for example, uh, more much, you are more machine or, uh, machine learning oriented or more visual uh, computing oriented. You can choose a little bit the courses uh, you want to you want to follow. But in the end, you will have the background in order to follow the second year. So for the second year, again, you have two periods from September to December and January to March, and then an internship to, an internship to do. Uh, you have long courses that last eight weeks and small courses that last four weeks. And for the two, so two big courses are deep learning and reinforcement learning. And then for the small courses, you have again courses on visual computing at the one uh, doing by my poll, uh, which is advanced 3D graphics. Um, and you have also, for example, uh, courses on uh, virtual and augmented reality, in when you are able to uh, to create your own virtual world and play with it. And you have also courses that are more uh, oriented to machine learning as uh, NLP, for example, or uh, computer vision. But all these courses uh, somehow mixes uh, the machine learning components and the visual computing components, so that in the end, you don't have just a uh, background in machine learning and visual computing. You have really a background in both these fields and in how to combine these two fields uh, to create and to solve new problems. And as I mentioned, you have the transverse project, so uh, oriented towards companies or partners. And you have also a seminar, which takes place uh, one, uh, one afternoon, um, one afternoon per week during uh, from September to, to March. And then during this seminar, we uh, invite uh, many, many people to come and to talk about uh, technical issues of AI, but also ethical issues and uh, judicial issues of AI, so that you can have a philosopher that comes and uh, to think about, to make you think and think about what is AI and what should be AI. Uh, we have also people that comes and say what, what should be the law regarding how we use AI and how we create an algorithm and how they, can, they should be used. So it's really interesting and this gives you a, um, a broad overview of what, what is the impact of AI to society. So we have many different applications regarding where, whether in which field you want to uh, you want to work after after the master. So we described some some of these fields here. So for example, uh, digital applications, uh, control of autonomous vehicles. You can work also in virtual reality. We have uh, many we had in the past many mini internships and many uh, people from the past that were hired by Ubisoft. Uh, you can also work in the e-commerce or online advertisement. More generally, you can work in any field that are related to machine learning or visual computing. Uh, and we encourage you, if you want to do so, to pursue with a PhD because all courses are research oriented. So they are done by uh, the most uh, important, the most famous researchers in their own domains. So you are really close to the research that is done in those fields. So we encourage you to, to continue uh, into research. And research is not only important if you want, is not important only if you want to do a, a research career, for example, in academic, but it's also important if you want to go into big companies, for example, like Ubisoft, uh, it's really valuable to have in the end a PhD in those, com in those companies. So how can you apply? So first of all, being here is a good thing uh, in order to, to know about the master. Uh, and we uh, mostly uh, we mostly uh, encourage candidates to apply that have a solid background in computer science and mathematics. So if you want to, you can apply for the first year or for the second year directly, uh, depending on whether you have a bachelor or the equivalent uh, first year of master. Um, so we encourage you to apply if you have a bachelor in computer science or mathematics, or if you can, um, state that you have the is equivalent level uh, given your studies. Mm -hmm. So maybe Lily, you want to you want to to continue? Sure, sure. Uh, so here you have a testimony of uh, of an alumni who followed the program. So uh, you can scan QR code and maybe you can find out more about him um, and his experience as a student. Um, now I will explain you about the uh, application procedure. So, uh, in order to apply to the program, please, yeah, 
Thanks. Uh, in order to apply to the program, you need to complete the online application form in the website and include a list of supporting documents. Uh, the first one is the scanned copy of transcripts of all previous post-secondary education, including exchange programs. Uh, we need the scanned copies of your degrees, and if you are currently finishing your bachelor program or engineer program, you must also upload an enrollment certificate. About references, then you are required to provide us the contact details of two referees, no less, no more than two referees. Uh, one of them must be a professor at your current school or a previous one, and the other one can either be another professor or a manager supervisor of your last internship or previous job. Uh, you're, you'll find a section in the application form in which you can fill out the contact details of your referees. They'll uh, receive an email to complete the references, and uh, once it's done, you'll be notified. Personal statement. Uh, so about this document, please respect the format that we request. We will not accept a statement of purpose that you wrote on your own, not answering the questions that we ask in the personal statement. Uh, a few examples of questions. Um, explain your motivation and interest in the subject uh, for which you are applying to. What are your career goals? And please be as specific as you can. Be honest. Uh, this is a personal statement uh, that is going to be read by the admission committee uh, professors who are experts in the field. So please uh, be concrete and coherent. Um, show your motivation about the program, but also uh, try to put some examples so the, the jury can have a clear idea of what is your motivation. And then a CV, you need uh, to present a CV to be, it has to be concise and written in English, two pages maximum, if longer, unfortunately, we are not able to accept it. You need to include your current situation and all of your work experiences, academic background, of course, your extracurricular activities, personal projects related to the program. And please include also, uh, Again, I will repeat it because it's very important, the current situation, what are you doing right now? And sometimes the applicants forget, but it is something important and I strongly uh, advise from you to add. Um, English test, this is an English speaking program. So you need to present an English language proficiency test, IELTS, TOEFL, Cambridge, and it has to be at C1 level. Uh, the test must have been taken less than two years ago. If you don't have this document at the moment of the application, then you must upload a proof uh, that you are enrolled to take the test. In case of admission, of course, you will receive a conditional admission letter until you provide us the official results. Uh, GMAT, GRE, and DASHMAT are not required for this program. And finally, another document, and very important, is a copy of your passport. Be careful about the expiration date. And, uh, you have to pay uh, 90 euros for the application. Then, if your file is complete within the deadlines, uh, you've correctly uploaded all the supporting documents, uh, your application will be evaluated by the admission committee. It may take around two weeks after submitting your application in order to have an answer and you know your admissibility results. And the first, this is the first part of the process. Then some students will be pre-selected and invited to interviews, which is the second stage. The interviews uh, last from 20 to 30 minutes. They are uh, online and jury is composed by the director. So the program and admissions team, it is conducted entirely in English. So we advise you to prepare in advance and be ready for questions about your scientific culture. And in this case about artificial intelligence, computer science, so be ready for that. Um, your motivation to the program or anything you have done in an academic or professional context. Um, we could ask you also uh, about anything <laughs> that's on your CV or your personal statement, of course. Um, so do your homework, um, search more about the program, try to contact uh, current uh, students or alumni to find out more about their experiences as a candidates and as students previously. Um, so the final decisions are made um, based on the application file, but in the, on the interview, which may be the most important stage. 
um, the interview permits us to go further uh, than just the application file. So it led us uh, to get you to know better, uh, see if your motivation for the program is really strong, to see if you are a good fit for the program. You will be able uh, anyway to find out more information about the, the masters and the application process uh, and admission requirements on the website. We can go to the next slide. Thank you. Um, so about tuition fees. Um, so uh, the tuition fees, uh, tuition fees are 17,500 uh, per year. And you uh, will have access if selected by the committee to some scholarships. And these are scholarships are very limited. They are reserved to excellent profiles. And so the admission committees will select the best candidates for scholarships sponsored by industrial partners. The number, uh, as I said, uh, of awarded students is limited and the amount may cover up to 50% of the tuition fees. Uh, it may vary from one year to another. Also, Ecole Polytechnique uh, foundations may award scholarships to a few number of students, but the selection happens in the spring 2023. So, um, I started by this part because I think it is very important for you to be conscious about uh, the investment uh, that it will require. So please uh, be careful also to plan how are you going to finance your studies. Um, then uh, we can present the calendar of admissions, please. And the next slide. Yes, so um, the first round has already passed. So we are just finishing the, the first round of admissions and the second round is open until February 12th. So you are able to submit your application until uh, this date. Um, please complete all the documents on time uh, to be uh, sure that you don't miss it. And uh, if you need any help, please do not hesitate to contact us. You can scan the QR code just here and you will find out more about in the website and contact us also by mail. May, the mail is in the next slide. Uh, yeah, Pamela, mm, thanks, thanks. Yeah, you can also contact us in this email, gtadmissions at polytechnic.fr. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I can see that we already have a question. Um, is a candidate majoring engineering, like geological engineering, eligible for this program? I have a great passion for AI. I studied data science related summer courses and have several scientific research experience using mechanic learning and deep learning. So I would say that it's, it mostly depends on your background in computer science. Uh, usually we are quite flexible with the machine learning and deep learning part. Uh, but most often in those kind of trainings, uh, you don't have a, a, a background in computer science, which is, um, let's say, broad enough uh, to join the first year. It may totally depend. So it, uh, I would I wouldn't have a strict answer, so it totally depends on the precise background you have, the precise study you followed. So it yeah. depends. But it maybe may I can be. I can add that in some of the French engineering schools in geology, uh, you do have a training has programming in Python, and you may have seen algorithms and data structures. So in, in this case, you may be you you may follow the master one probably, and especially if you were trained also uh, to use. 3D software, you may have a sense of, uh, of, of also the visual computing part, but it, you, you will be borderline. So it really depends on your own skills and motivation. Typically, this would be tested uh, during the interview. Thank you. Um, do not hesitate if you have any question to ask it in the Q&A button. Um, May I, I, will, I would like to add something to all participants online that feel them some kind of borderline but are interested by the program. A few years back, we had a, a student from medicine who wanted to enter our program, and he contacted us two years in advance to, 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 to ask which 
complementary courses he would need to follow in order to be able to, to follow our program and to be accepted and then to be good, to be a good student for us. And so he did that. He, he took extra courses during the summer. And when he interviewed and, and, and he was actually well prepared to follow this, and he is now a successful student in our second year after a good first year. So, uh, I mean, uh, it also depends on your own motivation, as I said. There is another question about um, the background. Is a student with biomedical engineering background eligible to apply if we have taken most of the computer science courses and did a final project on deep learning? Same answer here. Hmm. It's exactly, exactly the same answer. We are not against this background, given that you have the right uh, basis in math and in statistics, and given that you have the right basis in uh, data structures, algorithm has a minimum knowledge of computer science. Um, fee is fixed for year one and two. Um, it is 17,500. It will not rise in a year for the second year, for example. And what time should we make the payment? Yeah, may, maybe I can answer this uh, question. So uh, the fee is fixed for students in year one and year two. So you stay with the same fee, same academic fees for both a years. Um, at the time of admissions, you will be required to make a deposit payment of 3,000 euros in order to uh, reserve your, your slot. Um, so, uh, yeah, that will be the initial payment and then the, the rest will be uh, to be uh, paid in the, in the entry in September. Is there a minimum GPA requirement in the bachelor's for this master? Nope. Of course, we, we try to, we try to have a very high level students, but it depends on the training you followed uh, and also depends on the specific courses you've taken because uh, the university you're from. So it, it, it depends. You shouldn't, you shouldn't restrict yourself uh, based only on your GPA. Of course, if some courses are completely unrelated to our program, say chemistry, for instance, in this case, we would not mind if you get bad grades to these courses, but we will, of course, look very carefully at the grade you had in computer science and mathematics. Thank you. Well, I don't see other questions. Um, is there anything that you would like to add, maybe Erwan, Marie-Paul, Lily, about Yes, I would like to, uh, I, I forgot to say something, is that, uh, in fact, what makes our program unique is really this, comp this combination of artificial intelligence and visual computing. If you look at other programs, you will find programs that only focus on artificial intelligence, uh, such as, for instance, all the data science programs you can find. And in this case, most of them, some of them are, are, are more in math, others more in computer science. So it's, a, it's really, you don't have anything about a specific application. Here in this program, it's mixed with visual computing, which is the creation of 3D virtual worlds, for instance, for video games, for feature films, and also uh, computer vision. Uh, to train robots also. You have two courses, as Erwan has mentioned, on the design and fabrication and also on the navigation of, of, of robots. So it's uh, it's really, uh, and also we, you have the conversational 3D virtual agents. So it really gives you other kinds of skills, which we find very complementary and very interesting to find new application of artificial intelligence. So if you choose this one, this would be for the good reason that this is a unique uh, program combining these two different skills. Okay, so if you come only for artificial intelligence, you can you have many other choices. Or only for visual computing, you also have many other choices. Here is your unique chance to combine these two skills. Thank you. Well, we have a, another question um, for candidates that apply through Etudes en France. It shows additional requirements under comments. What do I do to continue my application? 
Um, so applications are carried on only in our application platform, no other platform. So uh, first we need to apply in our, um, in our website. Uh, and no, we, unfortunately, we don't, uh, we don't give like fee waivers to, to applicants because at this stage of the admission, we are not sure about the, the profile. So, so at Toutes en France, it's, uh, yeah, it's, a, it's a way in which students can also get information about like uh, trainings and, and academic um, um, courses in, in France, but and it's not the flat platform where you have to apply for this program. Is there a fixed number of students enrolled from international locations? No, not really. We are open to any number of applicants from foreign countries, uh, but we have a, we, we try to, for the moment, we are limiting the total number of students to a single class of, say, 25 students maximum in total, because we would like to keep this very close interaction between the, the student and the professor. And our, our, our training includes lab sessions, very practical uh, hand-on training, for which is much better to be a small group. You have also a courses, for instance, on virtual and augmented reality, which requires the use of a helmet and so on. And so it's difficult to do it for large groups at once. So, uh, so really, we try to focus on a small group of excellent students. Where can we find information about professors who will teach us about their industrial background? On the website, there's everything on the website and um, you also have information. Um, every uh, Some teachers have their own website, uh, so you can also click on it and get all the information i was uh, maybe i heard badly but i heard professors and their industrial background yes so in france most professors don't have any industrial background you have different careers some people become professor or they go to work in the industry some industrial partners will come over and participate to the training by teaching you in the ethics law and new application of AI seminar, for instance, or they will be your ad advisor in the transverse project, but they are not among the professor. These are two different careers. So don't be surprised if you look to the website of the professor and we are not, we are not judged on our, our industrial background. But of course, we, in, our, in our career, we got lots of industrial contracts with the industry. Mm -hmm. And I would just like to add, just do not hesitate to contact current students or alumni. They can also give you more information about the course content and professors, what are their experiences. So they should be available on LinkedIn. So just try also to, to, to try to search more information on your own that site. It could be helpful. Yes, feel free to scan the QR code that is um, on your screen you will be able to access to different information such as our website, but also uh, the brochures and our social media uh, and the different testimonies. So it's a very important tool for you to get different information. And of course you have the email, the GD admissions. If there is any other question that you have after the webinar, feel free to contact Lily. Um, through GD admissions. So I think we don't have other questions. Um, so if there's anything that you would like to add, feel free to, to add it. Um, um, yes, I would just like to come back to the calendar of the admission yes. calendar, just to uh, remark that uh, we the round uh, the second round missions is open. So please um, take your time to fill out the online form and to upload all the required documents, which is very important. Just be careful with the English tests if you haven't taken them uh, yet. Prevent to enroll to the test and. Uh, ask for transcripts to your school and etc. There are lots of documents that require like a lot of uh, uh, like, to, like to do that in advance. So please uh, be careful about dates. So you have until February 12th to, to 
fill out the online platform form. So let me add something as well, uh, is that most students apply to the master one, but some of you may have done a bachelor uh, in, in um, applied math and computer science in four years. And in some specific cases, you have already the right level uh, to go directly to the master two. So you can very well push your application for two in this case to the two years of masters and depending on your specific background we will decide whether we admit you as a master one student or a master two student so if you, for instance if you if in your four years bachelor you are already trained in statistics and you have already followed lots of machine learning courses if you have taken a computer graphics course or computer vision course image processing courses you might be uh, accepted directly to the master too. This can be interesting for you. And uh, so we have, we welcome application to both levels. We have another question. Um, how are placements in industry after this program? So I would say that 50% of the students uh, continue into industry, work into research and department uh, industry after after the master, and the other 50% continue with a PhD thesis, which can be either uh, with a private company or in academic. So we have a, a really, uh, I think all of students uh, found, found now a, a job. Uh, and you can work in private company either in research and development in the research and development department uh, or uh, via PhD. I, I must add that most students after their PhD then uh, then go to a company. Uh, uh, we so far we didn't have any of our former students who became a professor. So of course, uh, everybody is high, happily hired by the industry. It's a, it's a domain in which uh, skilled people are in high, very high demand. So it's, a, it's their, cho their choice to do first a PhD because then they can really go to work in research and development part of these com big companies, which is the most interesting. Else you will, would be a uh, yeah, basic engineer in those companies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would just uh, like to to say a little bit more about uh, scholarships. Uh, just and very important is that uh, we consider students mostly for the first and second round for scholarships. They are like more priority. Um, so the earlier you apply, the best chances you will have like to to be eligible if uh, you fulfill the requirements. And again, the number of scholarships are limited. And also think about uh, another kind of sources in which you can also find your studies, try to look for uh, scholarships given by, for example, Campus France or other institutions in your country, or maybe plan to take a, a loan. So yes, please, that's something very, very important because once you are admitted, you will have deadlines in order to confirm your your uh, place so uh, yeah please um, be careful with that as well and do not hesitate to ask us if you will need any advice in which we can help you we are here for you we have other questions um, i have a diploma from the university of cambridge a level and the language of instruction for my undergraduate studies was english language do i still need to provide language test Uh, okay, um, yeah, uh, you will need to provide us an attestation in which the school uh, um, validates that you have completed all your previous studies in English. We just need an attestation saying this and, and it will be okay. Um, yeah, in that case, you will need to, to present an English test, just an attestation from your school. Um, in do we have to apply for M1 and M2 separately? No, you can just apply to M1 or M2, and depending on your profile, we 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 can change afterwards the the application to the other year. So you don't you don't have to to apply for both M1 and M2. Yes, do a single application and don't pay twice. Mm -hmm. Is there any recognition given to MOOCs, especially programming courses?
no specific recommendation. Mm. Uh, uh, recognition about recognition given to MOOCs. yes recognition mm -hmm. maybe you wanted to, uh, you asked for programming courses maybe you wanted to uh, to know which languages so students will need to know python but it would be for the visual computing part it would be very very useful for you to new, to know c plus plus as well so uh, if you were doing complementary programming courses uh, I would suggest that you train in C, C++, uh, and also uh, the most important is also the theoretical knowledge in algorithms and data structures that enable you then to tackle any computer science programming, uh, yeah, uh, programming challenge. So you, so this is this is basically what you need. But if you train in a specific language uh, on top of Python, I would recommend C++ or C sharp. Maybe just to add to add something, um, depending on your, for example, if you if you have an interview, depending on your level, we can uh, advise you to uh, to follow, for example, a MOOC or or to go and study some topics uh, before getting uh, getting uh, in Ecole Polytechnique in September, uh, just to learn so, some topics. So in in this way, we we give some recognition to MOOC uh, for. Uh, for training, but before uh, before getting admitted to to a polytechnic, because we must add that for the master one, you will be not only the small class of maximum twenty five, but you will be with all the Ecole Polytechnic engineering students sharing courses at the master one level, and these students, you know, it's a mainly the most highly ranked school of engineering in France. So these students are very quick, Ecole Polytechnique students, very high level. And so the courses tend to go fast. So they are quite demanding and preparing yourself during the summer can be really good depending of your background. Um, a person is asking if, does my application profile get strengthened by completing online courses such as from Coursera? So it can. Uh, it it depends. Again, it depends on your profile. If, for example, you have studied in uh, uh, in mathematics and you don't have any 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 experience in computer science, following MOOC on computer science can be can be useful. But most of the time, it, it doesn't make so much of a difference uh, between between the profiles. Um, so I, I won't advise you to to follow like ten, ten different MOOCs just to get admitting into the master. Uh, it's a plus. Uh, of course, but it's not uh, it's not the most important thing in your in your profile. The most important is that you get a deep understanding of what you know. Okay, that so that we can ask uh, ask if you ask after ask you question that you are practically able to answer. If you want to to follow too much and don't really get the contents, it would be of no use. But what you could do anyway in your motivation letter, uh, if if your courses is not it doesn't really fit. Uh, with what is expected. In your motivation letter, I encourage you really to list the, the extra skills you, you have acquired. And then if you are interviewed, you will have opportunity to show these skills by answering our questions. Um, someone is asking about the approximate percentage of people who are invited to an interview after the first stage of application. So I would say it totally depends on the profiles of all people that applied uh, in the in this first stage. Uh, I mean, we have the percentage, but I, I mean, it's uh, useful to know them. Uh, it totally depends on um, on your profile and how your profile ranks uh, among the other ones. So, yeah, it changes from one round to the other. It depends on the profile, as everyone said. It's like we 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 are not. Uh, able for to instance, if I want to 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 say more, as when so this program was created, we got application from students who didn't have at all the right background. So of course, mm -hmm. if you look at the percentage, we looked much more selective than now. But it's not the case. I mean, uh, it's just that people now understand better what is required to work in these fields, and we explain more. Maybe we we mm -hmm. manage to have explain you better what is required. So I mean, yeah. Of course. Okay, so um, I think we answered all of the questions. Uh, once again, 
feel free to contact the GD admissions email uh, if you have other questions. Um, this webinar will be on our YouTube channel. If you want to see the replay, feel free to go on our YouTube channel, Ecole Polytechnique. Uh, thank you so much for your attendance. Thank you, Marie-Paul, Lily, and Erwan. Um, again, if there is anything you want to add before saying goodbye, feel free to. Okay. <laughs> well, then, thank you, so thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, we hope to see you soon on campus. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.